Good morning. Welcome to another service webinar. We're excited to see so many familiar faces and work through a new topic with you today. Before we begin, I want to highlight your ability to use the chat to ask questions throughout the meeting. We have several team members who can answer questions directly, and they'll also pass along any questions that are relevant for the entire group for a Q&A session that we'll have at the end. If you do have to leave before you receive a response from our customer support team, they'll reach out to you afterwards. So on that note, let's go ahead and jump right in. Our topic for today is utilizing time slot events. Now in the past, we've covered service projects and managing hours, and you can review those webinars on our YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to focus on time slot events specifically. So we'll start off by defining our terms, uh, next, we'll move into different examples of time slots, some special features and settings of time slots when you're creating or updating them, and lastly, a few tips when you're managing time slot events specifically. So to begin, let's talk about the different types of opportunities available within service. When you go in to create a new opportunity from the main dashboard, at the top of this page, the opportunity type is the first item that you'll see. And there are three different options that you'll see here. We'll have normal events, time slot events, and service projects. So the big kind of breakdown is between events versus projects. And again, we had a webinar on service projects that you can go and review entirely, but the idea behind a service project is that you're creating a long-term activity where hours can be recorded. So as opposed to telling volunteers when to arrive, uh, what time their shift is, you can use service projects to allow volunteers to record activity, whether that's done in situ with the sign-in console, uh, or if that's done retroactively. So maybe after a volunteer participates in something, they could go in and log or record their activity. But events in service, whether it's a normal event or a time slot event, is a way for you to define shifts that volunteers are registering for. A normal event is effectively a single shift. So you can see here we have normal events selected, and if we look down here, there's one start date and time, one end date and time. So I'm effectively telling my volunteers that something is happening at a specific date and time. You know, maybe I have an event happening this Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon. You know, that would fall under the purview of a normal event. Time slot events are simply a variation on that. Time slot events allow you to create multiple shifts that your volunteers could then select between. And those shifts could be happening at the same time, just with different parameters, like what job they'll be doing, or they could be happening at totally disparate times. Maybe it's the same job occurring on multiple days of the week or multiple different times throughout a single day. Uh, but the idea behind a time slot event is that you're creating shifts that your volunteers can then register for, and all of those shifts fall under the umbrella of a single opportunity name and description organizer, meeting location, and interest categories. So a couple examples of time slot events. Let's back off to our volunteer perspective. These are some events that I have established in our demonstration console currently. We're gonna look at a couple of these right now. One event is called sort and repack. This is effectively like a food bank type event or a food pantry type event. Uh, where it's the same sort of thing happening five days a week and volunteers can come in and do that job. So basically this time slot event, if we click into it, uh, you can see it occurs basically five days a week, always 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. and volunteers can just identify whatever shift is best for them. Now in this example, this event is actually established for the entire calendar year of 2022, but my volunteers only see the current month, so the remainder of July, plus one additional month. We'll talk about that more in a bit, but that is a setting on time slot events specifically. So this is one example of a time slot event, something that's recurring you know, on a frequent basis, whether that's daily, multiple times a day, weekly, monthly, anything like that, where you have the kind of the same thing happening over and over again. You can use a time slot event to represent something like that fairly effectively. Another example that I have right now is called uh, Neighborhood and School and Cleanup. And this is essentially a uh, festival type event. We have a bunch of things happening on a single date and time, Monday, August 1st, around 8 a.m. to noon. Now there is some differences between a couple of these time slots, but the main difference is the title of the time slot itself. So effectively what job the volunteer will be doing when they arrive. So again, this is just another example of how to utilize a time slot event. There's nothing 
distinct about you know this time slot event versus the previous example that we looked at, apart from, of course, how we set it up and what we labeled those time slots as. So time slot events can span either of those two examples, or of course, really anything you can think of where you have multiple shifts that you want volunteers to be registering for under the umbrella of a single event name, location, description, and interest categories. There's not really a set you know, definition of what could be a time slot event. It's really up to you how you define that. There are some cases where something like a festival, like that neighborhood and school cleanup event, uh, you know, in that case, there's just kind of one shift for each team. So that kind of makes sense to put that all in one time slot event. But maybe each of those teams has five or six different shifts throughout the course of, you know, the cleanup event. Uh, well, in that case, it might make more sense to create a single time slot event for each of the teams. And then each of those time slot events would describe when those particular jobs are available. Or maybe you just want all of that in one place. So there really is some uh, options in, in terms of choosing how you want to establish your time slot events. Um, they're not really laid out how you have to do it. Uh, the ideas are you know, going to be driven by what your needs are. We're going to look at next a couple of the kind of more specific settings when you're establishing a time slot event that are a little bit unique compared to the other types of opportunities, normal events or service projects. Now, a lot of the settings are the same, right? Something like the name of the opportunity, the description, uh, whether or not you have the wait list enabled, who the organizer is, a lot of these things are the same. But let's point out a couple items that are unique to time slot events and also some things that are the same but are worth pointing out you know, when you're talking about the concept of a time slot event. So the first thing to note, of course, is that you need to generate how many time slots you are creating. This is just the base number of time slots that you're generating. Um, so if we were to create that neighborhood and school cleanup event that I had, I believe there were five different positions. So we just put in five here, click on add slots, and that creates five different time slots for me to manipulate uh, the data within. So each of these time slots has its own date, start time, and end time. So again, these could be totally independent or they could be similar. They all have their own number of volunteers needed, which this number does need to be greater than zero. If you enter in zero here, you're telling the system that you don't need volunteers for this shift, so it's going to hide it, uh, which we'll address this later, but that can actually be useful in certain circumstances. But generally, you of course want to put in the number of individuals you need for that shift. Next to that is the status. Now, this mirrors the status options when you are publishing an event online. The default here is open, but you can see we have closed, canceled, coming soon, contact us, and sign in console. So if we scroll down, when we're creating an opportunity, the publish online option also contains effectively those same options. So what the publish online setting controls is the entire event. If I want my event published at all, then I need to choose yes in order to publish that opportunity. And of course, yes, open allows volunteers to register for the shifts that are available, assuming they meet the requirements. The other options like closed, canceled, coming soon, contact us, those will display the opportunity online, but volunteers will not be allowed to register for the opportunity. And it'll give a little reason why, whether it's canceled, coming soon, contact us. The sign in console only option will not display this opportunity online. So a volunteer would not be able to register ahead of time for this opportunity, apart from you sending them a direct link. But you on the admin side could register them. And then more importantly, this will show up in the sign-in console. So it won't be displayed beforehand, but it will show up in the sign-in console. So if you have your sign-in console set up to allow walk-in registration, you could have people execute day of registrations on this opportunity without having seen it beforehand. This is generally most applicable if you have sort of like a catch-all time slot event or a service project in most cases, um, but this setting can be really useful in certain circumstances. Now again, all of these settings are under the publish online option, uh, but they're mirrored for every time slot. And what makes that significant is that I could publish the event online, so set this to yes open, but then if I have a certain time slot event that's uh, kind of more unique, maybe I want to hand pick someone for that shift, well then I could set that one to contact us. And then that particular time slot is gonna be closed off from the general public. 
um, but I could still register people on the back end. They can still see the shift, but they wouldn't be able to register for it on their own. The default behavior, of course, is that all of these are set to open. So if you just want people to be able to sign up for it, you don't need to make any other changes. The hours option for each time slot is how many credit hours that shift is worth. And again, this can be modified by volunteers signing in and out or after the fact if you wanna modify hours, but this is the default credit hours that each shift is worth and they do not have to be the same. So if one shift is longer than another, that can be represented through here. This number is recorded in hours, not in minutes. So if something was one hour and 45 minutes, you would do 1.75. Lastly, the notes field for each time slot allows you to effectively give a title for that shift. This allows you to dis distinguish information or provide additional information about the differences between each of these time slots. If it's the same shift happening on different days, like with my sort, uh, sorting food event, then in that case, I don't really need to provide notes. That's not gonna give my volunteers any extra information. Uh, in fact, adding notes would just add clutter to the page, especially if all of those notes are gonna be identical. So in some cases, it's best to leave this blank. But in the other example I provided, that neighborhood and school cleanup, where it's you know, a bunch of different shifts happening and volunteers can pick based on what job they want to do, well, the way they're informed of what that job is is by the notes itself. You can think of this as effectively a title for that time slot. So if you do need to just create your time slots by hand, maybe there's four disparate positions or five disparate positions and you wanna set those up, you can just go through and fill in all the information. If you do have some shared information, there are tools to help you create larger scale time slot events. So for example, if we scroll down here, you can see under, at the bottom of this section, we have display time slot bulk update options. And if we open that up, you can see in this section, all of the fields that we just looked at can be bulk updated. So maybe all of these are happening on the same date, right? July 26th, we can go in there, select that date, click on bulk update, and that will add that date into every single time slot that's selected. Now by default, everything is selected, but maybe all of these are on the 26th, except for this last one. Well, then what I could have done is selected all of them and then unselected number five. By default, they're all selected. There's also buttons down here to unselect or select all of those. And then of course, you can also manually go through and pick those. So maybe this one is unique. It's actually occurring on a different date. Now, of course, this is a bulk update option. So I would only do that if I was you know, manipulating multiple time slots, but just to show you, as an example, so maybe I wanna change, you know, first, third, and fifth time slot to all start at 10 a.m. I could go in here and select that as my start time, click on bulk update, and that will then only affect the time slots that have been selected. So if there's shared data between some of the time slots, but not all of the time slots, then that's your best bet for producing an update like that. So that's true for any of those different fields when you're creating a time slot event. And then there's one other very important tool when you're creating large scale time slot events, and that's the idea of repeating a time slot. Repeating a time slot is a function that you can do after you have created the time slot initially. So you will not see that option on this page when you're initially setting up an opportunity. Um, what you'll need to do first is create your time slot with all the templates that you have, and then the system will allow you to update that event and repeat the time slots over a given time frame. That can be a very helpful tool if you have something similar occurring on a daily, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. As an example, if we look back at that time slot event that I created previously, the sort and repack event, you know, I mentioned this, I, this time slot event is set up for the entirety of 2022. So it's around 265 time slots. To create this time slot event, I did not tell the system to generate 265 time slots and then just change all the dates by hand. What I did is I created one time slot and then I told the system to repeat that Sunday through Thursday uh, for the entire calendar year. So let me show you that function real quick. Um, we'll just use an example that I already have set up. So if you have an existing opportunity that you've created previously, then what you can do is go into that event click on manage time slots. So sorry, we are in the search and manage existing opportunities menu under opportunity management. 
And if we go into that existing time slot event, click on manage time slots, that will take us to the page where the time slots have already been created. So in this case, this is obviously an existing event, um, but when I initially created this, there was only one time slot. And so to repeat it, on the left-hand side, you'll see that there's a repeat button, and you can take that, click on that button, and then tell the system what days of the week to repeat this on. So maybe this happens every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or maybe this is only on Mondays on a bi-weekly basis. You can tell the system which days of the week to repeat this on, and then the frequency. So weekly, of course, would be every week, bi-weekly is every other week, and then you can also choose to do the first, second, third, fourth, or last occurrence of the month. So maybe you have a team meeting every two, second Monday of the month. Uh, you could tell the system to basically generate that event for you um, by telling it to repeat on Mondays every second occurrence of the month. From there, you give it a start date. This defaults to the date of the shift itself, so you might want to jog that forward by one. And then you can also select your end date. So you could go to the end of the calendar year or however far out you need this event to go. And then the system will take that setup in terms of the frequency and which days of the week and build it out between those two dates. So creating an event like this is actually very simple. Um, to do this initially, again, all I did was create a time slot event with one shift that was you know, 1 to 4 p.m. on the first day of the, of the calendar year. And then I told the system to repeat that out. So that repeat function is very helpful when you're creating large scale time slot events. But again, it is not something that you will see when you are initially creating the opportunity. You need to create your templates first. And by templates, I mean whatever the shifts are that you're going to be repeating. Uh, and then, you know, fill out the rest of the information, the name of the event, the description, point of contact, all that sort of stuff. Once you've created the opportunity, then you can repeat that uh, over the given date range. So I mentioned the idea of templates as well. I just want to clarify that really quickly. Uh, so in the example I showed, I had the same shift essentially, five days a week, one to 4 p.m. If I had a morning shift and an afternoon shift, then I would create two time slots initially, and then I would use that same repeat function two different times, once for the morning shift and once for the afternoon shift. Okay, so there are a couple other unique settings that I want to point out regarding time slot events. So if we scroll down here, a lot of these settings are going to be the same as what you would see with a normal event. I actually want to jump down to the advanced options. And there's a few things that I want to point out in here. Um, first of all, you can choose to allow multiple time slot registrations or not. The default behavior of time slot events is that volunteers can sign up for as many shifts as they would like to. For something like my sword and repack event that's five days a week, that's great. If someone wants to come in every day this week, I'd love to have them. And so I want the system to allow multiple time slot registrations. But for another uh, example like that uh, neighborhood and school cleanup where it's a festival, everything's happening at the same time, instead of letting volunteers pick multiple shifts, I only want them to choose one because they're all happening concurrently. So you can tell the system to not allow multiple time slot registrations, and then that will only allow volunteers to register for one of the shifts within this time slot event. That's also useful if you need to just set up controlled events. Maybe it's a really popular event, and you want to give more people the opportunity to sign up for it. You could tell the system not to allow multiple registrations. The third option, require all, is useful if you have an event that is effectively a series. Maybe you have, uh, you know, a couple meetings or a class or a training that happens every Tuesday night for the next three weeks. And if someone wants to participate in that, they have to sign up for all three of those. Well, you could create a time slot event with three different Tuesday shifts and then tell the system to require all. When a volunteer goes to register for this event, it will select all those shifts and they'll be registered for all three of them. So this is much more situational, but can certainly be useful in that type of idea, like a series of events. Below that, we have this setting to require approval of volunteer self-registration. Now, this is not unique to time slot events. Normal events has this option as well. However, there is a unique setting in here, and that's yes, first time only. So just to back up a little bit, this setting changes your event to require you approve volunteer registrations. I don't typically recommend using this setting unless you have one of two different scenarios. Either you need to vet every single registration on your opportunity, 
So you don't want people to be able to sign up directly. You want there to be a stopgap. And then you can look over their profile before they're approved for their shift. Or you want to pick from a pool of applicants. This can allow you to do that as well because anybody who registers for this opportunity is actually added to a pending list. And then you have the ability to go through that list and approve or reject those applications as you see fit. So for time slot events, uh, that functionality is the same, but you also have the ability to say yes first time only. This is more useful in that scenario of vetting registrations because what you can do is for the first registration in this opportunity, you would have to vet that person. You'd have to approve them. But once you have approved someone for one shift in this opportunity, they would be approved to sign up for any of the other ones directly. So it's kind of like a stopgap the first time, and then after that, they have permission to sign up. It's kind of another form of setting requirements or restrictions on an event, but it allows you to track exactly what they were trying to sign up for because they're added as a pending registrant. Okay, a couple more options that are unique to time slot events. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have the ability to uh, hide open slots until. This is, of course, unique to time slot events because it has that time slot language. And this is something that I was utilizing in that sort and repack event that I showed previously. I mentioned that that event is set up for the entire calendar year, so all of 2022, but I don't want my volunteers to see that far out. The default behavior for this setting is show all, which means that when you create a time slot event, volunteers will see all of those shifts if you choose to publish it. Uh, but you can choose to hide them until a certain number of months prior. So in my example, I have this set to one month prior, which means that volunteers can always see the current month. So right now they're seeing the remainder of July and they will also see one additional full month because we're one month prior to that. So they're seeing all of August. So the way I think about this is the current month plus whatever number you select here. So again, this can be very useful if you want to set up a whole schedule, maybe the whole year, and then not have volunteers be able to see everything at once, but maybe sign up two months out or three months out. You can use this to control when those shifts are displayed. All right, so those are a couple settings that are kind of more unique to time slot events and just have sort of different engagements in terms of how volunteers can register or how they're displayed to volunteers. I do also want to mention one other setting, which is not unique to time slot events, but can be very advantageous in different scenarios. Um, it's also a newer feature, so it's always good to point these out, and that's custom registration questions. Anytime you create an opportunity, whether it's a service project, normal event, or time slot event, you have the option to add in custom registration questions for that opportunity. Uh, these questions are Effectively, another part of the registration process for a volunteer, um, they provide a stopgap, so volunteers have to answer these questions. Uh, they could be optional, but they have, they're presented with these questions before they complete their registration. The benefit of using questions like this that are unique to opportunities is that, you know, there might be situations where you need to collect data from volunteers for this opportunity that's not something that you care about for other opportunities. Uh, let me share a couple examples of that. So I have an event called Meals for Families. This is a time slot event. And effectively, volunteers are signing up to bring a meal to a family. When they sign up, I would like them to tell me what type of dish it is that they're bringing, uh, like whether it's a dessert or an entree or an appetizer, and then also the name of the dish. The reason I ask that is because then I publish that information so that volunteers can see what other volunteers are bringing and then effectively correlate or kind of work together uh, to produce a full meal as opposed to everyone signing up to bring the same thing. So in this situation, let me show you this from the volunteer perspective. If we look at my Meals for Families event, uh, you'll see here on the left hand or on the right hand side, there's this view list option. Uh, this is a setting when you create an opportunity, you can allow volunteers to see who is registered for the event. And you can also have that include additional information. In this case, I am allowing people to see who is registered and their answers to the custom questions associated with this opportunity. So when a volunteer registers, they tell me what type of dish are they bringing and what's the name of the dish. And then volunteers who are looking at the list of attendees can kind of use that information to influence what they might choose to do. So 
if someone wanted to sign up for this next shift, uh, let me go back here, then they could look at the list of attendees and see, okay, this person's bringing bread, so I should probably bring an entree. It allows them to kind of work together uh, or collaborate on those meals without necessarily having to communicate directly with that individual. So this is one example of using custom registration questions, specifically with a time slot event, but custom registration questions have a lot more utility than that as well. Um, and also, of course, I chose for that information to be displayed, displayed publicly in that opportunity. That is a setting. So let's, let me show you that setting real quick, and then I'll talk more about custom registration questions. So when you're creating or updating an opportunity, under advanced options, there's a setting to display the registered volunteers to the public. This always defaults to no. If you do want volunteers to see who else is registered, you have to select that. And in my case, in that example, I said yes, include registration questions. You can also do yes, include registration notes because you can allow volunteers to add, uh, add their own notes when they're registering for the opportunity. But if you have like directed information you're looking for, uh, the custom questions are a better way to, to produce that. That's where this setting is housed. Again, that is always off by default. Going back to those custom registration questions, couple things to point out. Um, I just wanna show off a couple different use cases. Like for example, I have this reading mentors event where I need volunteers to provide uh, basically a reference. So they can give me the reference name and phone number, who their current employer is, their highest level of education completed, and then also volunteer history. These are all custom questions, which I can enable on any opportunity, uh, but obviously they're more relevant in this case because volunteers are working with children. To create questions like this, you can do so directly through any event because any event has this option to manage custom registration questions. If you don't see any options here yet, that's because you haven't made any questions and you can do so at the bottom, click on manage registration question inventory and build out a question through here. You can make these text boxes or selection boxes where you provide the options. You can make it a required field or an optional field and you can even have required answers. So if you need someone to say, yes, I do speak Spanish in order, in order to sign up for an event, you could make that a required field with a required answer. So there's a lot of options in terms of how these are utilized. We do have a webinar on this topic as well. So feel free to watch that on YouTube also. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that you can set a time slot to need zero volunteers and that would hide a time slot. Typically you won't want to do that, but there is one specific scenario where that is really useful. And that's the idea of repeating a time slot. So if we look back at my sort and repack event here, if we go into manage these time slots, let's say that one of these shifts falls on a holiday or we have some sort of closure we know ahead of time. Um, there's two ways that I could manage that. Again, when I initially created this, I just told the system to repeat five days a week for the whole calendar year. Uh, now, if you know, the system is doing that, it's not going to care what the dates are, so it's gonna produce things on holidays or days that you aren't necessarily working. So to correct that, you can do one of two things. You can either delete the shift. On the right-hand side here, click on the delete time slot. That will actually change the uh, status here to deleted, and then when you update the event, then that will remove it entirely. Or you can change the number of volunteers needed to zero. And then again, that would just effectively hide that shift so volunteers would not be able to see it or register for it. The reason I might use that option instead is because you could then duplicate this event from one year to the next. And then one of the options you have for time slot events specifically is you can update every date by adding or subtracting a certain number of days, months, or years. So if I wanted to use this event again next year, I wouldn't necessarily need to recreate it. I could duplicate it and then just shift all the dates forward by one year. Now, as you know, that's not gonna necessarily land on the same days of the week. So then I would want to, you know, maybe add or subtract a couple days to make sure it falls on the correct day of the week. And then in that scenario, you know, something that was a holiday previously, like Christmas Day or July 4th, you know, those aren't necessarily going to be holidays anymore. And so I could, you know, if I had marked it as zero, I could re-enable it by entering a, you know, a valid number there. And then whatever is the new holiday, I could uh, hide. So it just gives you some flexibility down the road if you are duplicating those opportunities. 
Okay, there's one last major topic that I want to mention, and that's registering or managing registered volunteers within a time slot event. Uh, so if we go into view the registered volunteers for a time slot event, this is very similar to a normal event or a service project. You know, the registration op option at the top of the page allows you to look up an individual and then sign them up for any shift. Now, when you click on register here, it's going to take you to a separate page where you can see all the shifts that are upcoming. And there is a filter here at the top for displaying dates between two different dates and then also what day of the week. So actually, if you have someone who has told you, you know, they only want to sign up for Tuesdays, uh, maybe it's someone who wants you to sign up on their behalf or you just want to do, it, do that for them, you know, you could select Tuesdays and a certain time frame, and then that'll filter out and show you only those shifts. So it's very easy to go through and select which ones they'll be present for uh, and then register them for all of those at once. So that's, of course, unique to time slot events. And then also when you are uh, reviewing registrations, so if we go back into viewing the registered volunteers, uh, at the bottom of the page is where you see all the registrations. And there's two filters here I want to point out. You may have overlooked these in the past, but they are pretty important. One is displaying registrations completed between these dates. Now this date range is generally broad enough to encapsulate any registration that took place on the opportunity. But if there were some instances where someone was registered well ahead of time, several years beforehand, you might need to change that. More frequently though, if you're just looking for a particular set of volunteers, like I only want to see people who signed up yesterday, then you could use this filter to filter out what registrations you are seeing on this page. Now this exists for all different event types, not just time slot events. But then below that, you also have the option to display slots between these dates. And this will default to today's date uh, moving forward, not necessarily the entire opportunity. Uh, it has a limited number that it displays, so it's a couple months ahead. But if you wanted to look at, let's say for example, last week, I don't see those shifts because they've already taken place. The system tries to show you what is relevant first. So if I wanted to look at shifts from last week, I would just change this start date back to whatever new date I want to use click on filter, and then that will display me those shifts going back to that start date. Other than that, managing registrations within here is very similar to other event types, uh, with the exception that you can select shifts at a time by using the checkbox within each of those time slots. So if you wanna email an entire shift, uh, you, know, you don't have to select each one individually, you can just select the shift itself. So there's obviously a lot of other management options tied to opportunities. So if you have questions about those, please feel free to write those in. But that is what I wanted to cover today in terms of time slot specific options and actions. We covered different examples. We talked about kind of what defines a time slot as compared to a normal event or a service project. And then we looked at some of those features that are more unique to time slot events and kind of how to utilize those and what that works for. So I wanna point out to you a couple of resources that are available. I mentioned a couple times today our YouTube channel, which is where our webinars are housed and other tutorials as well. If you go to video.servicetech.com, uh, that'll take you to our YouTube channel. You could of course just go to YouTube and search for service technologies as well. This is full of a lot of different information. We have a lot of short form tutorials in here in the two to five minute range, kind of intended to give you a quick introduction or a quick answer to different topics. Um, and then we also have webinars that are stored on here as well. So all the past webinars are recorded and posted here. There's a large lump of them because we recently published all those at once. Um, but there's also some videos in here intended for volunteers. For example, right here, there's a video about how to print your volunteer history. Uh, you can identify those with the orange banner, but these are intended to be something you could send out to your volunteers uh, to provide them a resource. So this is a great resource. There's a lot of information in there. And then I also wanna mention, whenever you are logged in as an admin to your system, you'll see at the bottom of the page this need help button, and this is how you contact our support team. So if you click on that, you can type in a topic. So let's say you wanna learn more about time slots. You could search for that term. That'll show you any articles that have to do with that. You can click on those to open them up in here. You can also expand that to go to a fuller version of that page. Whatever you've searched for though, you can always click on contact us at the bottom of that section to submit a support request. Our customer support team has posted hours of Monday through Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, and they are very prompt and they're very knowledgeable. 
So feel free to use this as often as you need. So once again, I wanna thank you for all for your time today. It's a pleasure to see you in the chat. I know I've met with a lot of you directly, so thank you for joining. We as a team are grateful for the work that you do throughout all the different organizations and communities that you're engaging and serving and impacting. Partnering with you is one of the most satisfying aspects of our work. So if you have any questions from the content we covered today, feel free to contact our support team. Uh, if there's any open questions, I'll leave this open just for a little bit longer to make sure those get answered. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your week.